Welcome back to the Jenna Jillian Podcast. This episode Thank brought you to for you. welcoming me back. Well, and then. Who? Just not Kermit. Oh, okay. Everybody but Kermit. Welcome Everyone's back to welcome the podcast. Everyone's welcome except for Kermit. Speaking of Kermit, Kermit's diet consists of farmer's dog and he loves it. He's He loves it so much that when we're not feeding him farmer's dog, he cries for it. <laughs> so true. feed your dog some... Farmer's Dog, it is an incredible service that feeds your dog. Human grade uh, recipes developed by board certified vet- veterinary nutritionists. And you can go to thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian to get started. Get 50% off your first two week trial of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian. Check out or click the link down below. Uh, 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 We have have to go sit in your bed. They're going to be annoying. They're going to be annoying. Well, they're always annoying, but they're going to be especially annoying because what do we have today? (laughs) Something that Samus wants. We have mug pizzas that Jenna has made us specifically for this podcast. Yeah, because I was hungry. Well, and it's a great to go snack. (laughs) The last time that I made a mug pizza... You're, you're just going to have to deal with it. There's food on the table. They're very excited. The last time that I made a mug pizza was when you got your wisdom teeth out. Oh, my gosh. Yes. You were taking such good care of me. Mm. Well, yeah. you wanted uh, a chocolate mousse, which I made from avocado, I think. It was super good. And I made you mug pizza, which you loved. I loved it. you're... A hungry boy. I'm a hungry boy. And you just wanted something savory. Because yeah. there's a lot of like really sweet things that like you can smoothies make. smoothies and... Yeah, I mean, yeah. usually people eat like jello and mm-hmm. stuff when ice cream when they get their wisdom teeth out. No, I wanted some, soup. some meals. Yeah, he wanted pizza. And hot and sour soup. And Those hot and sour soup. Those are the two things soup. you made me when I had my wisdom teeth yeah, out. Yeah, and I cut all the tofu up into tiny little pieces for you. Take such good care of me. So I made this mug pizza yes. for you. Mm-hmm. And the recipe's on Pinterest for those of you that are interested. Pinterest.com slash Jen and Julian. No, no. Oh, we don't have a podcast Pinterest? <laughs> no, okay. Julian. Um, and it's basically flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt. You whisk the dry ingredients together. Then you put a tablespoon of milk, a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of pizza sauce, which we made. Which we had in the fridge because we made pizza these. We made pizza week. the other day. And then a little cheese, some Italian herbs, and we put some vegan pepperoni topping. And, then and I long... made sure to microwave yours first so that you were forced to let it cool for a second. Hey, you got to stop <laughs> screaming. It's not That for is you. so good, dude. Is it? Oh, my God. All right, good. I thought we could have a... Nice special treat. Yeah. So if you're listening or watching the podcast and you're able to grab a snack and join us or don't, you know. Yeah. Whatever weird snack you got going on, because I mean, this is sort of a, a pantry special right here. It is a pantry special. Which is, I'm grateful to even have food. So I'm excited Very to grateful. eat anything cheers. right now. It's cheers. weird. It's rare that you get to cheers your dinner. <laughs> Also, you don't need tomato sauce to make this. You could just make a white pie version of it. Honestly, just microwave whatever. <laughs> Some in a flour cup. and cheese. <laughs> mm. It's really good. Oh, that's so good. There's a lot of mug like cakes and like stuff you can microwave on Pinterest. Yeah, mug meals. Mug meals. Here's a business idea: mug meals on wheels. You okay. deliver uh-uh. mug meals. Mm-mm. No. No. How about mug meals for? Mug Meals on Wheels. You deliver Mug Meals to those <laughs> delivery men who work for Mug Meals on Wheels. That's really thoughtful of you, Julian, but no. I got more ideas. Prank I'll- prank puzzle. It's a puzzle gift that you can get someone, but there's always one piece missing out of the box. That is torture. That's sick. Prank puzzle. That's so sick. It also has a camera inside the box. <laughs> I didn't realize we were on Shark Tank right now. We're always on Shark Tank. We kind of are. I kind of always am with you. You're my shark. We've been watching old episodes of Shark Tank when we go to well, sleep. The old ones are really good. It's just it's such a different show um, now than it was when it started. 
Like, like, is there like nice to these people and not trying to take like 70% of their small business? Yeah. I mean, they really played into the shark kind of persona and they were all, I felt like they all got bonuses for being mean because they all really just were mean when they didn't have to be. Yeah. Like, I don't like you. And they're like, dun, 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 dun. Hey, I think you're a shit guy. Get out of here. And then the person leaves. Yeah. I'm like, like um, what the hell is this? Oh my God. Barbara was savage a couple of times. She was like, you know what? I really respect your work yeah. ethic. I think you're great. But this product is awful. Yeah, this I'm idea out. sucks. And you're I'm just out. Like, Jesus Christ, dude. Um, Chill. We also, along with a lot of people, just finished Tiger King. Oh my goodness. What a wild fucking ride. It was a wild ride. It was a wild ride from start to finish. From and start to finish. It doesn't seem like it's over. No. Well, because at the end, spoiler alert, if you haven't finished it, we're going to be talking about it, I guess. Um, they talk about how Doc Antle's kind of spot was raided in December, which was three months ago, for four, almost four months ago. So you have to imagine that like, by the time that they had wrapped production of all this in documentary and had everything kind of edited, that's when that happened. Mm -hmm. So you have, I mean, you have to believe that they're already filming like part two or whatever. But holy shit, dude. Like, talk about interesting personalities meets, like, underground world that nobody knew about meets crazy criminal shit. Mm -hmm. It's, like, all, it's, like, the most juicy entertainment I've ever, like, in one series that I've ever watched. And it's weird because I know that, like, a lot of the people in the documentary, Joe Exotic, Doc Antle, Jeff, I mean, like, so many of the people that they document... Carol, they're, they do bad things and they have qualities about them that on paper, you're like, you're, you're not a good person. Like things that you're doing, um, don't pick him up. <laughs> he needs to stay He's screaming. on the floor. It's okay. He'll, he'll get over it. A lot of them have qualities where you're like, okay, you're not that great. I shouldn't be rooting for you. But then they have, some of them have redeeming qualities where you're like, man, I like you though. Well, that's what I And that's how I felt about Joe Exotic, especially. Was one of the most interesting parts about the whole series is that everyone is so like violently human. Yes. Everyone has like these good parts about them and these horrible parts. And that that's what it is to be a, a human being. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. And that's what makes this like such a weird, unrelatable topic of a documentary. So relatable. And I think so interesting to so many people because like you said, it's like, uh -oh. this isn't a movie. These aren't characters that are written perfectly to be, Whatever characters they are, they're fucking people. Right. Um, yeah, I, it was fuck, man. There were a lot of moments that I felt I, I don't know if this is problematic or whatever, but I felt bad for Joe Exotic and like he made me want to like root for him, you know. And um, man, like some so much sad shit happened to him, even though he was you know a criminal and did bad things and like talked about killing this woman talked about killing this woman and allegedly you know put a hit on her or whatever and killed animals. But like, ah oh man, it's just weird. It's weird how it makes you feel like that, like so conflicted. But the whole the whole time, you're just like, like you you just you were an episode ahead of me or two episodes ahead of me for a day or two, and you were like, you're not ready for what's about to happen. And that's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's like every step of the way, you're like blindsided what by what the fuck on? is happening next. You just can't even. And the fact that they have so much footage, dude. Mm -hmm. Like wow. Just I mean. Just the idea alone, like Doc Antle having all of these wives, mm -hmm. that is a show on TLC, yeah. the sister wives. Mm -hmm. Like just their personal lives alone mm -hmm. is a great show. Yeah, but you put it all together. <laughs> like what the hell is going on? Mm -hmm. Wild. So what do you think is going to happen next to Jeff Lowe? What do you think is happening to Jeff Lowe? Oh, I think that they're all going to go down. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the series, you know, obviously they point out during all of this, the animals aren't winning. Yeah. You know, like no, no good has really come out of this for the animals. Yeah. And everyone's just like screwing each other over and, and trying to... Some of that yeah. legal stuff with Carol Baskins was like the... the it was horrible the mm -hmm. way that she sued his mother and was just like house. suing everybody yeah. like that is a nightmare yeah. that is absolutely horrible yeah i mean yeah someone threatening to kill you and and all like it's all terrible 
And I, I just, it's like fighting fire with fire, like back and forth until both of their lives are just like destroyed. I know. No one wins. Nobody won, especially not the animals. It's like what they said. Like, if you put, bring him up here, he's not going to want to sit in your shirt either. He's going to go for your food. Like, he's a problem dog. <laughs> he's a problem dog. You have to stop screaming. One person I never really felt for was uh, Jeff Lowe. I never liked him. I don't think anyone, mm. like, I don't know how you could like that guy. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, w- like, another interesting part of the series is, right, like, there are these mortal enemies, right? Carol Baskin and Joe Exotic, they, like... They're like sent to earth to destroy each other. Mm-hmm. Like they're just so like the rivalry knows no bounds. And her whole argument is, you know, he is exploiting and abusing animals. And they mention it a little, a little at the beginning, but it's like, well, what are you doing over here? What is Big Cat Rescue? Like, what are you actually doing? What does your facility look like? What, what is your mission? Who, how much do you pay your employees? Oh, none. How much do you make? Oh, a millions? Like, it's very weird. It's pot calling the kettle black a whole lot that I feel like was glazed over. Yeah. And I mean, not to like, hey, Kerm, you have to stop, bud. <laughs> not to glaze over the fact that he literally, allegedly, put or I mean, he was convicted yeah. of it, but yeah. like he put, a, he put a hit out on her, yeah. Yeah. which is horrible. Horrible. Yeah. But what is really sad about all of the, the legal processes to me is that the person that has more money has the ability to keep this going and to... To run the show. To just destroy this other person. <sighs> I ha- let me, Julian, please. This is our life, by the way. This is, I mean... No, no. This is what we no, deal with. No, no, no. <laughs> He's Carmen, feral no. for that mug pizza right now. Carmen, no. Okay, I'm going to hug you because you've been <laughs> screaming. Yes, we love staying home with our family all day, every day. Yes. Um, Carmen... <laughs> It is interesting though, because but isn't that the like, money runs the show? Stop it! Hey, that's feral of you. Um, I mean, people have talked about this for so long yeah. in our country, in particular, mm-hmm. about how unfair the, the legal, legal system, system is, yeah. and how people with more money mm-hmm. can exploit it and just bury other people, mm-hmm. and that's terrifying and sad. Yeah, and I think. The one of the best lines from the show was the uh, producer of mm-hmm. the reality show. Yeah, I liked him. That was saying, I mean, they're both doing the same thing. <clears throat> they're both exploiting these cats for money, yeah. and they're they're just they think that the other one's the evil one. Yeah. But Carol Baskins just had more money than him. Yeah. Yeah, and then, dude, like beneath that whole rivalry, the fucking mystery about her ex-husband i mean there's so much about what that story that just dog. creeps you out especially like i think the creepiest thing about that whole saga is how she talks about it because when you like when you watch footage of um i don't know like widows right talking about their late husbands or whatever it's like most of the time in like whatever documentary or whatever it is, as long as it's real, you feel that like emotion. You're like, oh my God, this person is hurting and they've been hurting for so long and they got their loved one taken. And for at least for me, I never felt like she was giving off any of that energy when she was talking about it. In fact, she was like laughing during a lot of that, those questions about how ridiculous the accusations were and like how hilarious the thought of her like feeding him to the tigers would be and like how it is just like never nothing about her talking about that made me feel like she was innocent Mm, yeah and i mean that's people grieve in different ways and it was a long time and you know people sometimes don't emote the same way that other people do yeah but i agree with you that some of the stuff she was saying didn't necessarily feel genuine Mm -mm, no (laughs) it felt weird Mm mm-hmm but you can't, that's, you know. No, that's our job as Netflix watchers. We have to form opinions. What? That's what we no, watch. No, you can. I'm saying you can't convict someone of murder just because they, they're talking about it a little weird. No, for sure. It just gave me the creeps. It gave me the creeps as well. Are you dumb? No, I'm just trying not to eat it because he's screaming and sitting. <laughs> no, take a bite in front of him. I want to see what he does. No, Julie. That's wrong. Hey, we're about to feed him farmer's dog after the podcast. I know, buddy. Speaking of farmer's dog, it's a really great service. If you want to get your dog some food that they're really going to enjoy and benefit from because it's good for them. 
And they use whole real ingredients. What? What? Did you just segue? Oh, I, that was like five minutes ago. I'm I'm cruising now. If you guys haven't heard of Farmer's Dog yet or you haven't tried it, it is basically high quality dog food for your dog that is made really easy. And they send it to your house in pre-packaged uh, amounts so you can measure exactly how much your dog should eat. You go on their website, you enter a bunch of different answers about your dog, uh, how much they weigh, um, what breed they are, what their eating habits are, things like that. And they put together a whole meal plan that you don't even have to worry about. You don't have to, hey, you need to calm down. She wants her farmer's dog. You don't need to do the research. They're, they're handling all that, okay? They're certified and they're, they're putting the good ingredients that your dog needs and actually really, really wants in these packages for, of food. And if you have a picky eater like we did with marbles, farmer's dog solved that problem. And now they love dinner. They get so excited. So if you go to thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian, right, you, you get started with your own subscription for your own pet or pets, and uh, you get 50% off your first two-week trial of healthy food for your dogs. And I, I really feel like if you're on the fence about it, your dog trying it is going to tell you everything you need to know. It is a good product that your dog will love, and um, they'll be on a healthier diet. And it, it's at a, a very high convenience to you. It's delivered to your door. You don't have to go shopping for it. It is nice. It is convenient. So check it out. Click the link below and get started. Thanks to Farmer's Dog. What? Last week, I was reading some of the comments and you guys were, a few of you were let down that I didn't segue because we had no sponsors last week because we weren't supposed to podcast last week. Yeah, we were supposed to be at a wedding. Supposed to be at a wedding, but um, obviously we're not. And um, I just want to to the few of you guys who missed my shout out, my segue. You know, shout out to you guys and for appreciating the segues. I'll squeeze another extra one in sometime soon that you won't be ready for. I don't think we need that. I'll, I'll squeeze an extra one in. I don't think we need that. This is really good. This is bomb, dude. ASMR mug eating no, sounds. <laughs> I finished mine. You did? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I have one more bite. Are you going to make mug cakes after this? Mmm. Without washing these. Okay, that's disgusting. Did I you, got a little on the mic. Did you get it off? Yeah. What was the What was the point of that jet ski shot at the end? Memes. Is that just for memes? I think so. Because it seems so random. And they what, probably paid a lot for that song. Probably. One of my favorite uh, parts of the entire series was no. uh, Joe and Travis and what was the other one's name? <sighs> Fuck, I loved him. What is his name? He had two first names. The three of them having a, a three-way marriage. That was great. I loved the footage of their wedding, of them wearing the matching pink shirts. Yeah. I just, I really, I thought that was delightful. I would have liked John to, Finley? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. I would have liked to have attended that wedding. Yeah. Wow. That was, that was a dope wedding. I also really, I mean, throughout the series, I feel like you start to, I mean, like I said this before, but like the people they're interviewing, like John Finley, right? And um, one of the keepers, the one with, um, there were two characters with no legs, right? Or was that, there was two, I'm pretty sure. Or was that the same guy? I'm pretty sure there were two. Maybe I'm mistaken. Anyway, one of them, I really started to like him. The one who left his wife at the end. Yeah. Like him, John Finley, like the girl who lost her arm. Like these people, you just like start to really, I don't know. You just like, you like them and you empathize with them. And regardless of the fact that, you know, they're in this crazy world that you had no idea about, you like... I don't know, they just become like your allies in this in the story as it gets crazier and crazier and people start to really show their ugly sides, you know? I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I, I think it. you see one part of Joe where it's like he goes to the bus station and picks up someone and gives them a chance to work and have a place to live and like what a lovely thing to do. Yeah. 
and hiring people out of prison and mm-hmm. giving them jobs and stable income and some food and a trailer. Like cooking that's Thanksgiving really cool. dinners for the community. And then, you know, he does things like cooking Thanksgiving dinner for the community. <laughs> Kermit just bit Jenna. For the community. And then you find out that he took that money to fund a hit, ma'am. To fund a, to fund a hit. What? How outrageously? I mean, it's it's human. Imagine the. You're right. You're right. It's like here's this amazing thing you did, and then here's this horrible horrible thing, that you, thing did. you did. Yeah, and then like you know, towards the end, they do a, a nice callback to like the original footage of when he first started the zoo, and how he's talking on camera about he really does feel for the animals and he wants to make a difference, and all that gets lost throughout mm-hmm. his his career as this guy, this eccentric owner of cats it's and i don't know it's just this like crazy transformation that you watch and what's i think it just the the documentary is so dynamic and it's so like immersive just because there is an insane amount of footage from all the different time periods yeah you know Throughout the story, it's you. Know, I feel like I'm not used to watching a documentary where I'm literally like there was maybe one or two reenactments. The rest was like fucking footage, and yeah. you're just like, how did they get this? How do they have all of this? Well, because they were filming. They're filming all the time. It was. It's just a little unbelievable. The it's whole unbelievable. thing. But like, what's the driving force? Is it like? Because it seemed like the people like Doc Antle are a little like, you have to stop. <laughs> He's a problem dog, dude. <laughs> you can't have mug pizza. Don't bite me again. He's a problem dog. You you have people like Doc Antle who I think his motivation is sort of, he's like drunk on this power of having these exotic animals. Mm-hmm. Whereas it seemed like someone like Joe was a little bit financially and like ego motivated. It's sort of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But they both make money off of it and they like the attention that it brings them and it becomes part of their identity. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's wild. It's, it's fucking crazy. But because- it's as much of a part of... Of Joe Exotic's identity as it is Doc Antle's identity as it is Carol Baskin's as it is identity. Jeff Lowe. They like wrap themselves yeah. up into it so much. Yeah. That's who they are. Yeah. yeah. And it, it makes them do crazy things yeah. when they think that it's being threatened. Because yeah. they, they don't I mean, the the closest thing I can compare it to, I guess, from my brain is like when you're an athlete your entire life and then you have a an injury that makes it so you can no longer play your sport you mm-hmm. have like this you're identity crisis this, like, yeah, yeah you're yeah. like who well who am i this is my whole life yeah you know for these yeah. people they're so wrapped up in these worlds that you know anything that will come in and threaten that is like well then who the fuck am i even after like if this is gone who yeah. am i yeah yeah i don't know watching the um when they talked about doc Antle and they would kind of show and interview some of the girls who used to work for him and all the the crazy sex stuff that would happen and like really yeah, and they would nasty come there shit. As teenagers. Like horrible shit. A lot of that felt like I was watching something that was not in America. Like it did not feel like it was, it was America. In this country. That like when they had these huge like estates and you go behind the fucking closed doors of these crazy properties and they're just doing whatever the fuck they want. They have illegal animals. They're doing illegal things. They're basically sex trafficking. I mean, it's like unbelievable. And you're just like, this is in fucking Oklahoma or wherever. Where's Doc Hansel at? I don't Florida, don't maybe. I don't know. Whatever. It's just, I don't know. It's it, totally fucking reality mind bending for me to watch that and be like, I don't know. And like, and then all these people, you know, at, at a certain point in time, the one thing they have in common is that they all live in this underworld. And they don't want the rest, the rest of the world to like figure it yeah, out. Stay out of our business. Stay out of our business. That's the one thing that like they all have in common. Stay out of our business unless you want to come to our business to patronize and, and pay for it. Yeah. And but that's like see it. it's like the tip of the iceberg is the zoo. Like, oh, I'll see these pretty cats, cool. That's that's this much. And then beneath it is like all the crazy fucking shit that goes on that nobody knew about until they make a documentary about it. I just think it's a little. It's a hard. To understand what compels people to have an exotic animal in the first place. 
Because, I mean, you, you hear about stuff like that on the news, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And you know that it exists, that people have... You see it on TikTok, on Instagram. You'll see these people in other countries, for the most part. Yeah. But they'll post videos and pictures of them with tigers and all kinds of... And you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And I just don't... It's confusing to me, although a dog, in theory, could totally kill a person and attack a person... It, that that to me is scary enough, and this is a domesticated animal. Yeah. You. <laughs> Dear God. Dear God. Do you want me to pick you back up? But you were biting me. Oh, Carm, please. My bud. Carm, you're ruining what? our podcast. I just don't. It, it's hard for me to understand what would compel someone to like really, really want that. Well, you know? I think. So he just bite you again. No, I think he's it's growling at me because I won't let him eat out of the mug. I think it's a level of. I mean, in the in the age, I mean, even when before social media, like people would take pictures of them to have a photograph of them with a cat, right? But like today, where you know the, we live in such a one uppy kind of like social media driven like society with friends and whatever and people and social status, like. I would imagine people view that as like a huge leg up on whoever you're, you know, competing with with or or (laughs) compared with in any sort of sense. And the regard for animal life goes out the window at that point because of the fact that you're, you're able to kind of seize this crazy opportunity and be like, oh, I took a picture. I got to hang out with a big cat. That's where, that's what I think it it comes from. But to me, I, I like... Even just watching the the video or the the documentary, seeing video footage of those cats next to people in environments where they really, really just should not be, and it doesn't look right, and it feels wrong, it's it fucking is an interesting thing to look at. Seeing those those cats next to people, it just is. It's like voyeuristically, as a viewer, I'm like, wow, yeah, what, look at this guy petting this 900 pound tiger. Yeah, what the hell? What the fuck? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so it's like, it really is just intriguing and crazy. But at no point would I ever feel like that would cross over into my real life decision making to ever right. want to do that, ever. I mean, it's just so wrong on so many levels. But I, it's just, it's intriguing. The whole thing is well, fucking intriguing. So there's a couple of good points. There, I forget one of the guy's names was talking about, you know, if there's an endangered species of animal. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just make more? I, I'm not saying that people should be breeding tigers, yeah. but that logic yeah. is not necessarily flawed. But I think for people like Carol Baskins, or you know, they're they're having a rescue, and it talks at the very end about how there's between five and ten thousand captive tigers mm-hmm. in the United States, and there's less than four thousand in the wild total. Yeah, you know what what would you do in terms of making sure that tigers didn't go extinct? Number one. And number two, what is the appropriate way to keep a tiger captive? If it's even okay or right or ethical. Who do or, you, who, who's the expert? Yeah, who, knows who is that? the expert? Because it's not Carol Baskin. If it's not the, her property, I mean, to be fair, we didn't really see the extent of these people, where they keep them. And, you know, they don't give you like a tour yeah, of you only saw, Doc Antle's yeah, property yeah. or, you know, you see shots of it. Mm-hmm. But you don't, we don't really know. So we haven't been there. I haven't seen it. No, you, that's a good point. And side note, you have to imagine the doc, the doc crew spent most of their time filming on, on Joe Exotic's property. And when they went and filmed at Doc Antle's and at Carol Baskin's, you could tell, I mean, maybe I could tell based on the amount of outfits you would see people wearing that they only had a handful of days to film on those properties. Yeah. So that just adds fuel to the fact that, or your theory that it's, you know, that they only had a few shots or whatever. They didn't get the well, whole yeah, scope. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're, yeah, exactly. You're, they're talking about how their property is 40 acres. And I'm yeah. like, well, you know, I, I kind of saw like 10 shots of where a tiger was, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. that's not the scope of what their property may or may not look like. Yeah. And then, so even if people decided, okay, this is an appropriate way to have an animal, Mm -hmm. who are the appropriate people to take care of them? Is that a zoo? Is that a private zoo? Is it a a person that's also specialized in veterinary medicine for exotic animals? Like who are the right people? I don't know. And who are the wrong people? And what's right and what's wrong? And should it be in this country? Should it be in other countries? Like... You know, what are the rules? And I think it just gets so gray and so 
weird. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to think that for some entire like society to form itself, like this underground kind of big cat society has, there has to be a real lapse in judgment from lawmakers and the government, right? Because like, how does any of this even get started? Are they, they're not all smuggling shit illegally. I mean, maybe some of it, right? But there has to be loopholes in the law that allow this to happen. So I think the first thing you have to ask is like, what are the laws? <laughs> what is allowed? What about, besides like killing people, <laughs> what in this documentary is legal? And what is illegal? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so interesting to me because I don't fucking know. Can you get a cat from Africa or wherever and bring it to your residence and just have it there with you to to do with as you please? Is that straight up? Is that legal or not? I don't know. What are the stipulations for that? I think it's all interesting because I don't don't think a lot of people know the answer to that. I mean, maybe they do. Maybe I'm wrong and dumb, but I, I genuinely am just like... How would this whole entire story be happening if the laws were, this is very illegal and you will get a felony, you know, if you have, no, like there's loopholes. There has to be. Otherwise this wouldn't happen. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know either. I mean, it's uh, even in, within my lifetime, we we used to go to the circus as kids, Mm -hmm. you know? In Super you, fucked up. There's all kinds of zoos and yeah. Sea World and all kinds of stuff like that. Yeah. And it's only over time as people expose like what happens to the animals and people learn more about it that mm-hmm. the law eventually maybe catches up. Yeah. But yeah, privately owned zoo, zoos in this country, I I guess have probably gone unchecked for a little while because yeah. they're like, hey man, you got 40 acres and you got some tigers and you know if 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 they maul you to death. It's on you. It's, that's that was your choice and your right as a landowner, and as long as they don't go near anybody, you know that seems like that was the approach. Yeah. But if you know it's exposed that there's this like underground, we're selling cubs and mm-hmm. killing cubs or killing tigers, mm-hmm. or there's a possibility for them to get loose. Then, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll probably see something change. Yeah. And and um, shit, man. Yeah. But like also, what's a zoo, right? So like if you're in like a, what's it called? An animal, animal sanctuary. An animal sanctuary yeah. But you only have domesticated animals. Mm-hmm. Do the same rules apply to you as someone that wants to have six monkeys? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Do you, I don't even know what an exotic animal would be. If you have a, a ostrich, is it an exotic animal? Is it a... A reptile? I don't know. And the <laughs> definition for an animal sanctuary, according to Wikipedia, is a facility where animals are brought to live and be protected for the rest of their lives. Unlike animal shelters, san- sanctuaries do not seek place seek to place animals with individuals or groups, instead maintaining each animal until its natural death. Um, so that's the definition of an animal sanctuary. So uh, that would mean that, because Carol does refer to her property, Big Cat Rescue, as an animal sanctuary mm-hmm. multiple times. That would mean that once she gets cats to be, you know, on her property, they're there and cared for until they die. Right. And then if the law passed that, you know, people were no longer allowed to keep them as pets, Mm -hmm. it might be long after Carol Baskin's, you know, lifetime. But like, in theory, she wouldn't have an animal sanctuary anymore because there wouldn't be any cats to rescue. Yeah. 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 That's true. I guess would be cool. It just does feel like there's this weird, I don't know, legal loophole that she hides behind to be able to call herself a sanctuary like that because it really doesn't feel like one. I've been to an animal sanctuary, uh, you know, Gentle Barn. <laughs> I mean, it has a totally different like group of animals that we're talking about and universes of people, but still nothing about, I mean, I feel like she was really playing it up as this like Mother Teresa for big cats. Yeah. Like, look at me, I have this flower crown and i care for all these wonderful cats and they love me but like no you don't pay any of your employees you're rich as a motherfucker your facility doesn't really look up to whatever code i'm sure exists (laughs) i mean i don't know it's just nothing about it felt good well and these they're wild animals they're well that's the number one (laughs) that's the number one thing it's like they're big cats they shouldn't even be here yeah it's just uh it's a lot of a lot of 
ethical questions. Yeah, and it's, it's it's a loaded just, it's, yeah topic for sure. What do you do? You know, yeah. if if somebody say Joe Exotic was abusing the tigers really badly. Yeah, and then someone in law enforcement was like, well, "We're taking them away from mm -hmm. you." Yeah. Where do you take them? Who do you take them to? Who is qualified to? You know, I just don't know. I just no. I I, I hear you. It's it's so complex. <laughs> And it's so, what are they allowed to do with them? Yeah, are they allowed yeah. to charge people money to come see them? Like, yeah. what are they allowed to do? Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know either. <sighs> fucking hell, dude. What I'm curious about is the reality TV producer, the footage that burned down. What the fuck did he have? I wanted to see that footage. And what's yeah. crazy is like they already had so much footage for this documentary. Imagine what you know, if that hadn't burned down. Imagine the footage they would have it would have been twice as long. Yeah. I do feel bad because he he seemed pretty devastated about that. Yeah. Fuck. And if you if you're considering watching the series and you haven't yet, I want to issue a trigger warning for episode 5 because holy fucking shit, there was none. And yeah. it really blindsided me and fucked me up for a little bit. So just careful. Episode five, you know, trigger warning. But uh, couldn't recommend the series enough. I mean, it was incredible entertainment and really well done and just makes you think. <laughs> and I feel like with something like, you know, I both the the subject matter, right? This whole, you know, community of people who had big cats. And then also just like, the characters and the people, if they're all just, everything is so interesting about it. Just wild. With fascinating personal lives. Fascinating personal How? lives. How? How? It, it, it just can't be enough that you run an exotic animal private zoo. You have to go and have these outrageously fascinating Eccentric. personal lives. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, I know. Damn. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I don't know. I, I just, I think that's that's human nature to be curious as to how other people live, live their, their life. lives. Yeah. But like, what a fascinating group of people. Very fascinating. Yeah. Well, we binged that in like a couple days. So I'm glad we had that content to yeah. consume our time with and think about why is he grumbling he's a grumble boy grumble grumble Jeremy. we can peach have a hug since she can have a oh, hug oh miss weech why do you always bonk your head on the mic honey but um we've been I've, i feel like we've been dealing with the situation all right um i'm you know we're trying to be as good about like having a routine as we can and what are you doing play with the dogs, get outside time. It's been weird because on top of all that's going on, we're we're having especially erratic weather right now where one day it's sunny and then the next two days it's raining. And so uh, you know, on top of getting not, the littles to go outside yeah, in the rain doesn't really, they don't love it. And on, yeah. It. So on top of not being able to leave the house, can't even leave the house house into our yard some days because it's raining. So, and then we find a poop in the dining room, even though we've blocked the dining room off and we know exactly who pooped in there because they're the only one that can jump over the little barricade we made. Who are we talking Peach. about, Peach? <laughs> uh, Did but, you tell them? Wait, that. Um, no, I don't think I mentioned it online, but you Peach. Should. So it's we should. it's ridiculous. We noticed that uh, like a few months ago, we noticed when we would leave for our workouts, which would, hey, my guy. When we would leave for our workouts, which would be one of the few times that we would both be out of the house together. For the, mo I mean, for the most part, yeah, it's like usually day, one of us though, is yeah. here. Yeah, it's when we would go work out. But uh, it would only be when we both left. Uh, we would notice that every once in a while we would come back and in the dining room, there would be a little baby poop, a little <laughs> Iggy poop. And we're like, hmm, <laughs> this, is, this is interesting because there's two Iggies. So it could be either of you because Bunny's in her crate when we leave and Marbles, he usually just like passes out for <laughs> for two hours and wakes up and he's like where am i uh and so i thought okay easy solution let's take a, a couple of our our boxes of you know unused things or you know having some there's like a planter and planter the, and the some little just some 
packages. A footstool that we like barricaded off the dining room. Yeah, we with. barricaded off. We put like you know like a little bit of a wall like that's above their head. It's like a tall for an Iggy. It's tall for for them. You know they can't in in our mind they can't get through it. So. For a little while, I feel like it got better. There were less and less poops. And then they started to pop back up. But the barricade remained. <laughs> there, there was no less of a barricade. But then the poops were magically appearing in that room again. And so we were like, what the heck, dude? And so one time, I move the barricade. I walk in there. I'm cleaning up the poop. And Peach follows me. And I'm, I'm annoyed because I'm like, hey, don't you come in here while I'm cleaning up potentially your poop. And I say, Peach, get out. And she runs the other way and jumps the barricade to leave the room. Like it was nothing. Like it was nothing. She bunny hops the barricade and clears it by a whole foot and just runs to the living room. And I'm like, you just exposed yourself. You didn't even realize it. And then now, every single time there's a poop in here, she doesn't even realize it. But she's like, it was me. (laughs) It's like You're the only one. You're the only one that can get over that. Marbles sure as fuck can't. Kermit definitely can't. Bunny is in her crate. I'm pretty sure those are all of our dogs. So Peach is guilty. You knew it was Peach, though. Just one of the reasons that she owes Jenna a lot of money. She does owe me a lot of money. I don't know if she's going to pay it back. Anyway, thanks for the haircut. Jenna gave me a haircut the other day. feel really, really lucky to have gotten a haircut. It's not too late to join the Haven't Cut Your Hair in Three Years team in case you want to come to the dark side. It's pretty great here. Well, if you have a roommate, significant other, sibling, whatever, make them cut your hair. It might turn out good. That's what I did. Might not. Well, it might. Might not. Well, it also might. It also might not. And if it might not, no one's going to see you because you're in your house. True. (sighs) What's up, bud? What, What now? What are we doing now? He's been a lot today. He screamed. He bit me. He demanded pizza in a mug. You were a nuisance this podcast. I think it was a combination of eating good smelling food in in front front of him him. before he's had his dinner. Yeah, we should feed you dinner, bud. Yeah. You ready for dinner, honey? You ready for dinner? You want dinner? You want farmer's dinner? You want dinner? Anyway, um, sorry if this is lame. We're, We're trying our best to keep the content feeling like normal and good, but, you know. The world's not normal. The world's not normal, so. It is hard. We hope you guys are all doing okay and you're staying safe. Um, but uh, we'll see you guys next week for another podcast. If you have ideas, though, for a podcast right now, like, you know, we're open to them. So leave them in the comments or tweet them at us at Jenna Julian on Twitter and uh, we'll try to try to get some good shit pumped out for you. Good content. Right? Yeah. It's just, it's easier right now. I like to... You know, when you want to lift your mood, we'll turn on like Parks and Rec or Seinfeld or mm-hmm. something. And it's easy to forget. This is not present day. This was filmed some other time when it was easy to be light and happy. Yeah. And uh, it's making anything right now can get a little difficult, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But we're trying our best. But we're also trying not to be insensitive. So, yeah. But it was a very nice and welcome distraction to watch Tiger King Mm -hmm. because it just, it helps you get lost. Yeah, it gets you lost in a Mm -hmm. different world. So um. (laughs) I'm lost in Joe Exotic's world (laughs) and how many people just did not wear shirts the entire time that they filmed that. For those of you who watched it. I want to get on that level. (laughs) Just someone's like, hey, I'm filming a thing. So I just take my shirt off and fucking sit there. You fuck this. I'm not wearing a shirt for any of this. If you watch it, I hope you enjoyed our discussion. Um, and let us know your thoughts on it below. We'd love to hear. Um, anyway, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good week. And uh, stay safe. Be good. And, uh, you know, we'll hang out with Kermit. We'll cry for a whole week straight. So <laughs> see you guys later. Bye.